Do you miss it? That highway jungle used to be so familiar that we hardly ever noticed the noise. But now, just hearing the sound feels a little nostalgic. We used to be able to roam freely in the plains of asphalt, endemic to that environment of steel and smog, instinctively hunting down hustle, like predators hungry for busyness and progress. But in the blink of an eye, we were forcefully taken away from our natural habitat into concrete cages, chained to chairs and screens, not for entertainment, but for survival. It's been 50 days since the beginning of our incarceration. And within these four walls, we're constantly fed with a diet of news, both good and bad. But with no security of the future, many of us have become fattened with anxiety or malnourished from hope. Everything we were used to, everything we had planned out, all of that is gone and we're forced to restart and recalibrate. It's tough being forced into seclusion. It gets in your head. And our generation's inclination for busy and productivity really starts to take its toll when you suddenly stop without warning. But really, who can blame us? No one planned for this. No one was prepared. Yet for some reason, there's an incredible itch that's just too far down to scratch, an addiction that we want to satiate. We always want to do something, not out of boredom, but because we're desperately in search of an identity. Without anything to do, we seem to have been robbed of purpose. But how is it that a cat is always content and how do birds just know where to fly? What makes fish so sure that the direction they swim is the right one? The world is vast and provides endless possibilities, yet nature's tenants are always so sure in their way of life. Isn't it strange that for creatures who claim to be at the top of the food chain, we don't appear to be as confident in what we were created for? With our routines disrupted, we somehow lost our identity in the idleness and our purpose along with it. We suddenly don't know what to do or who to be. Ever stop to think that the foundations of our identity are so fragile that while we stop our activities to survive, the earth is unwavering and continues to move forward? It's so strange, yet it's true. In this pandemic, a cat remains a cat, a bird remains a bird, a fish remains a fish, but we do not remain. Is a student without a school still a student? Is a driver with nowhere to drive still a driver? How about a mechanic with nothing to fix? Is he still a mechanic? Debatable, I guess. But the fact is that these titles which we use to define us are so flimsy that at the flick of nature's catastrophic switch, their definitions are blurred. Everything else in nature doesn't seem to acknowledge any change from the situation. Whatever happens, their identity remains the same. Animals and plants confidently adapt to the environment because they are secure in their purpose they rest still in the fact that they don't need to define themselves, and they don't desire to. If there's one thing we can learn from nature, it's that. We didn't create ourselves, so why do we want to define ourselves? In our finitude, are we even wise enough to know? The isolation has given me a lot of time to think about the present circumstance and what it means for the future. As I wrestled with the desire to be enlightened, I realized that I don't have to know because what I do know is already enough. I know that God loves me and that He is good. I know that He is King, sovereign, and in control. 
I know that He is unchanging and faithful. And I know that He knows the outcome of it all. I know that His ways are not my ways. I know that things fall into place according to His will. I know that He will work everything out for my good. And all I need to do is to be still. You see, before we were even born, God knew what He wanted us to be. If we know Him and allow Him to move in our lives, it doesn't always take a lot of work to find purpose. Sometimes, we don't even have to do anything. It's not called the wheel. It's called the carousel. It let's us travel the way a child travels. Around and around, and back home again. a place where we know we are loved.